Thanks for tuning in to the Big Money Investor Show with Jim Ingersoll, where we talk about the best strategies for you to create cash flow and long-term wealth. Investing like the very top investors. Visit us online at www.bigmoneyinvestor.com and enjoy today's show. This is our very first Investor Success Podcast. So I want to begin telling you a little bit about myself so we can get to know each other and where we're headed with this podcast. My name is Jim Ingersoll. I'm so happy that you, you're tuned in today. I live here in beautiful Richmond, Virginia with my wife, Cheryl. We've been happily married for over 29 years and have a couple of beautiful daughters who have uh, taught both of them how to invest both in rentals and in flips. And our oldest daughter, Melissa, has two young children uh, who bring us incredible joy as grandparents as well. And I've uh, bought and sold hundreds of houses, um, starting off as a high volume wholesaler here in Richmond, Virginia. And that's what allowed me to escape the rat race of the nine to five corporate life and allowed me to create enough income to kiss that job goodbye. Um, today, my deal flow consists mostly of, of long term buy and holds for cash flow. Um, I've also got a great coaching and, and mastermind with students from all over the country, from California to the East Coast and in between. And I love helping others succeed massively investing in real estate because today is a phenomenal market to invest. I've also published a couple of books, both are on Amazon. I'm working on a third book right now. My first book is called Investing Now. My second book on Amazon is called Cash Flow Now. Cash Flow Now is all about multiple streams of real estate income. And I want to kick off our first couple episodes on this uh, Investor Success Podcast without guests so that we can get to know each other a little bit better. And then in the near future, I've got a phenomenal lineup of guests ready to come onto my show. You're going to love meeting them and they are givers they will give you so many strategies and so many tips for investing. We're going to cover everything from flipping houses to wealth building to uh, custom cash flow creation strategies and notes and everything in between. Well, this is the Investor Success Podcast. So I've got a question for you right now. What do you think of in your mind when you hear the word success? Do you see a big mansion with a fancy gate in the front? Maybe a big fancy red Ferrari? Or maybe a vacation home in the Virgin Islands. I love the Virgin Islands, and I'm sure you would too or if you've been there. Or maybe you're thinking uh, of a vision of taking your wife to Paris to celebrate your anniversary. Well, I believe success is, is more of a journey than a single destination. And along that journey, you find your purpose and your passion for the things that really matter most in life. I believe it's actually less about the wealth and the money that you accumulate and it's really more about the person you become as a result of finding success. Because as you learn new strategies, as you educate yourself and learn how to do real estate deals, and as you work on your relationship capital, the people you meet along the way will make all the difference in the world to your success. I want to start off by looking at some not so fun facts about what's going on in our world right now, if you don't mind, and then I'll come back uh, on this in a second. The bottom line is this. Here are six not so fun facts. You may want to write these down. Um, more than three quarters of our whole households in America are paycheck to paycheck. There are over three and a half million workers working at minimum wage, the bottom uh, rung on the ladder. The good news is America uh, has other rungs you can go up. You can create more income, especially if you learn to invest. The average household um, has more than $15,000 of consumer debt, and that's like a boat anchor tearing down our families. Uh, here's one near and dear to my heart. Average student loan debt exceeds $35,000. I just recently put both my kids through college, and um, I also went back and looked at how much my college costs now if I were to go back. And uh, I went to Rochester Institute of Technology in Rochester, New York, where I got a degree in electrical engineering. And that college... Um, if I were to go back today, it would be about $40,000 a year. It's a lot of money. Imagine over four or six years um, how much that is. I've got a master's degree. 50% of the graduates coming out of college are working jobs that don't even require a degree. The problem with college is a lot of degrees, um, you get a degree, but you can't get a job, right? And all they're really teaching you is to become a, a good worker, to go to your nine to five and come home every day and, and uh, hope and pray that you can keep that job. 
Um, 20% of car loans are exceeding six years in length. 20%, six years to pay off your car. And did you see the news this week about Kanye West? He came out and announced on Saturday, right after Saturday Night Live this week, that he's got $52 million of personal debt. Can you imagine how much stuff you got to buy to accumulate $52 million of debt? Well, we do live in, in a difficult times right now, but the old, the age old mantra of getting a great education, finding a job and working hard to climb that corporate ladder, it's not working out really great for a lot of people right now. Personally, that's the road I took for about 10 or 15 years. And finally, I let go of that ladder and began to control my own life. Success really is not about the money. It's not about buying mansions in Beverly Hills, and it's not about red, fancy red Ferraris. Really, it's about finding peace. It's about having freedom in your life to do what you want when you want to do it, and ultimately happiness. And happiness comes from a lot of different directions. Uh, finances is one of them. If you have financial peace, like Dave Ramsey likes to say, and I like Dave Ramsey, you'll have a, a lot more happiness, and you'll have a lot more peace. But it also comes from being fit in good uh, physical condition. It comes from taking care of your families and being good to your wife and your kids and things like that. <clears throat> um, who remembers the story of Judas in the Bible? I'm a believer, by the way, and faith is actually number one in my life. But Judas, uh, Judas gave up a lot, and he received 30 pieces of silver. Now, 30 pieces of silver back in the age of the New Testament when Jesus was on the earth was a lot of money. And he received his 30 pieces of silver for his betrayal of Jesus. Let me ask you, do you know how that story ends? How did that work out for him? He got a lot of money, but he got a lot of sadness and a lot of regret, and it ended with him hanging himself in a tree. So that's why I say success is a lot more than just money. It's about finding your purpose and your passion. It's about working on your peace, your freedom, and, and the joy you get to have in this incredible life. If you're in the United States like I am today, we've got a lot to be thankful for. Um, here's a few more averages to go back to this a little bit. I said earlier, the average consumer has over $15,000 of consumer debt, and that's like a boat anchor because it crushes cash flow on a, on a monthly basis. But, you know, on average, we're, we're 10 to 20 pounds overweight. A lot of people are a little bit depressed. And, you know, a lot of people don't like their nine to fives anymore. They get up, they go to work, they do the grind. They come home, they're not happy. They may head to happy hour. They may come home and watch TV. And that's the American lifestyle today. And uh, that is not the path to success. And that's what we're going to talk about um, on this podcast is how to break that mold and to change your trajectory in life so that you can go out and find all the success you deserve. Well, I got some great news. You don't need to be average. You don't, you don't need to uh, have that consumer debt. You don't need to be worrying about retirement. You don't have to worry about uh, student loan debt. Um, there's a lot better options out there than working the grind of a 9-to-5 J-O-B. You can take control of your future. You've got the right to go out and carve any success path you want for your life, and only you can decide what it is. The problem is you get to clean up your mind and clean up your thoughts a little bit and become positive and become an optimist. One of my traits is I'm an eternal optimist. If you've read my books, you know that I've talked about that, eternal optimist. And I'm very positive-minded, and I've got goals that are clearly structured and clearly written down that I'm heading out to achieving, and I'm carving out the path for my life that I want to. You have the right to do the same thing. It doesn't matter if you've got negative neighbors telling you that you're crazy for wanting to invest in real estate. It doesn't matter if you've got brothers and sister-in-laws or, or in-laws and parents that are saying, keep working that nine-to-five grind, and someday maybe you'll have security, and, you, and maybe if you're lucky, you'll be able to retire. Um, don't worry about what everyone else is saying. Take control of your own future. Start with what you've got right now and build on it as a foundation and carve out the path. Think about what you want your life to look like and make it happen. The good news is you can do it with real estate and you can do it with investing. And I'm going to show you how on this podcast. Let me start off uh, talking a little bit about compound interest because this is an investing success podcast, right? I want to make sure you understand what it is 
and why it's important that you understand what it is. Einstein said it's one of the most powerful weapons we've ever had. And of course, my background's engineering, so I'm a math and science guy. Love Albert Einstein. And when Einstein says compound interest is powerful, I need to listen to that because he was a smart guy. Um, compound interest basically is interest on the initial principal invested plus interest on all of the accumulated interest. It's interest on both the initial investment and all the interest you've been accumulating. That's why it's powerful. It's an interest on both. And so because of that, it grows really fast. I don't know about you, uh, where you're located in the country, but I grew up in a small town in western New York, up near Buffalo. When you think of Buffalo, what do you think of in the winter? You think of snow. And I was right in the middle of the snow belt. We used to have lake effect snow come right off of Lake Erie and dump it right at my house. Incredible amounts of snow and incredible amounts of, of cold weather. Unbelievable. How does that relate to um, compound interest? Well, when I was a young man, very, very young, 10, 12 years old, I used to love to play in the snow. I used to build snow forts. I used to jump on my sled and go to Allen Park and go down the, uh, the giant hill there or go over to the community college where they had another huge hill and I would go sledding. Another thing I would love to do besides throwing snowballs and creating snow forts was to create snowmen. Have you ever built a snowman? When you build a snowman, the way it works is you, is you grab up some snow in both of your hands, you put them together, and you create a little snowball. Then what you do is, is you put it in the yard and you start rolling it all over the yard. And, um, you know, maybe an hour later, this little four inch snowball has grown to about three feet in size, right? Because you're rolling snow, it's accumulating upon itself. That's exactly the picture I want you to think of with compound interest. It may start as just a tiny little snowball, but as you add to it, and as you roll it around and do more investing and more investing, and that, and that investment grows upon the initial principle that, you know, that think of that as the initial snowball you started with. And then as you roll it around, it's growing because the growth is upon the growth upon the growth. And that's exactly how compound interest works. If you want a, a visual on how compound interest works, um, start with a penny and double it once a year for 30 years. Do you know what it grows to? Do it on a piece of paper right now. Start with one cent, two cent, four cent, eight cent, 16 cent, 32 cent, 64, you know, dollar 28, two dollars and 56 cents. And do that 30 times. Do you know what you end up with? You end up with over five million dollars. So grow a penny, double it once a year for 30 years or 30 times, you have 5.37 million dollars. That's a lot of money. Holy mackerel, that's a lot of money. So it sounds so easy. All you got to do is double a penny 30 times and you got 5 million bucks. Did you know this though, that, that if you pay taxes and you're earning a good income, um, let's say you earn between 89 and $190,000, the IRS will put you into the 28% tax bracket. Um, let's take a look at what that 28% tax bracket does to your um, compound interest that you just built by doubling your penny 30 times. I'm going to tell you this is really painful because taxes will absolutely tear up your compound interest. So will, by the way, mutual fund fees and other things like that. If you're in a 401k and you think you're growing, uh, you're not growing anywhere near as fast as you should be because of all your fees. But let me show you the impact of paying 28% taxes on your magic doubling penny over the 30 years. <clears throat> If you pay your 28% taxes, and that's compounding 30 times as well, that's going to tear your profit of $5.37 million to down below $68,000. I hope that catches your attention. It's one thing to, to build your investment paradise or your investment portfolio to, to a nice cash flowing um, group of houses that provide rental income and things like that or flipping business. Flipping houses is even higher taxes, by the way, but it will absolutely tear it down. It'll tear it down from over $5 million to below $70,000. So hopefully that catches your attention because you want to learn tax secrets along the way. And the great news is I'm going to share tons of them in this Investor Success Podcast as we go through more episodes. 
So are you um, asking yourself if there are some ways you can invest tax-free? I hope so. That's a question that should be burning in your brain right now. Um, the other good news is uh, with, with investment real estate property, um, hard assets that, that produce cash flow is you get a huge tax savings in April called depreciation. And we'll get into that more in future episodes as well. I want to show you um, a whole bunch of ways to avoid paying that 28% taxes and maximizing the effect of your compound interest. Um, that's what this investing podcast is all about. Maximize your profits, maximize your returns, minimize your taxes, and create lasting cash flow from assets. That could be from buying and holding real estate that produces rental income. It could be from investing in notes. It could be from you becoming a private lender or, or it could be transactional based income, like wholesaling houses or maybe fixing and flipping houses. By the way, they make it look so fun and easy on HGTV, but the truth is there's a lot of moving parts and you gotta get a lot of things just right in order to really capture that big payday when you're fixing and flipping houses. Here are some different ways you can be thinking about starting off investing in real estate. You could uh, start off as a property locator. This is what we call a bird dog. They go out and they find real estate deals for real estate investors like me and earn a nice referral fee of, say, $500 on every house that, that I'm able to buy. You could go out and learn to be a wholesaler where you buy low and you sell low. You basically create equi equitable title in a house by writing a contract to a motivated seller, and then you find a real estate investor willing to pay you um, maybe $5,000 or $10,000 to assign your contract. So basically you earn money assigning contracts. Of course, there's lots of realtors and brokers on, on watching this show and listening in today. And you guys know how to create um, income by representing retail sellers and retail buyers. And you guys earn your 3% commission or 3% to list or 3% to sell. You could also be a fix and flipper and learn to rehab houses, find the worst house in a nice neighborhood, fix it up and sell it for a nice profit. This is sort of like day trading houses, uh, but it creates really nice income streams when you do everything just right. One of the best wealth building um, strategies you can use is to become a landlord, invest in local hard assets that produce rental income every single month. You could also go into the note business and you could uh, buy performing notes or you could buy non-performing notes. You could buy first lien position. You can buy second lien position. Both of them work pretty well. Um, and both of them have different strategies. You could also become the passive investor and invest your self-directed IRA into some real estate deals. You could uh, also become a private lender. All of this process, by the way, starts with, with having a motivated seller and you becoming a good discount home buyer. And that's where I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave off, but I wanna leave you with that visual. Personally, I would rather go shopping for houses than I would a sweater at Macy's, but when I do go to Macy's and look for a sweater, I'm always looking uh, to, for something that's on sale. And when you go out and you buy houses and you wanna create success, the very first step is for you to go out and find that house with instant equity the day you buy it, because the golden rule of real estate is you make money when you buy the house. You can't buy like 99% of the people buying houses to live in where they pay full price off the MLS using a realtor. You've absolutely got to go out and you've got to find deals and make deals where you've got equity from day one. And that's going to be the start of our next podcast. So I want you to be looking for it. And again, I'm Jim Ingersoll. I want to thank you so much for uh, tuning into our podcast today. I am your host for this podcast, uh, and I'm also the founder of the Investor Success Mastermind. And my team and I are dedicated to helping entrepreneurs and investors create lasting cash flow using multiple streams of real estate income. You can learn more about what we do at InvestorSuccessMastermind.com. And also, please feel free to reach out to me at Jim at InvestingNowNetwork.com and consider sharing this podcast with your friends and social media and subscribing for that next episode I've been telling you all about. If you want to listen to this and my other uh, podcast episodes, you can go to bigmoneyinvestor.com backslash blog, where you can also listen to my videos, watch my videos, and read tons and tons of blogs that I've written. 
Until next time, I wish you a successful week of investing. Go out and make some great deals and create long-lasting cash flow. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm Jim Ingersoll. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to share this podcast with your friends and social media contacts. And visit us online at www.bigmoneyinvestor.com.